Welcome back to Treasured. I'm Miss Chrissy and I'm ready to dig into today's adventure. I'm so excited to help you sing, have fun, and discover how you are priceless to God. Let's stand up and get everyone moving with our first song. Priceless treasure. God knows me, God hears me, God is my comfort. I am His, and there's nothing better. Forgiven and chosen forever. I am a treasure. treasured, we're imagining what it would be like to explore faraway places in search of valuable treasure. But you may not have to go far to find treasure. In 1992, a man in England lost a hammer in his field. He asked a neighbor to help him find it. But look what they found instead. Hundreds of years before, someone had buried a wooden box filled with coins, jewels, and gold, and they put it out in the field. That makes me wonder, if you had something valuable, where would you hide it? Perhaps under the doghouse in the backyard? Maybe in a hole in a tree so that when the tree grows, the treasure becomes out of reach. Or in a cave in Timbuktu. There are a lot of fun places to hide treasure. God sees the treasure hidden inside of you. 
He sees your creativity, your sense of humor, and your kindness. He knows all those things because he made you and loves you. Let's praise our loving God with everything we've got. It is so amazing to think about God's love for us. When you look around and see massive mountains, towering trees, and crazy creatures, it's hard to believe that the same mighty God who made all those things loves each and every one of us. Looking at God's creation is one way we see God. We don't see God the same way we see our friends and family, but we can see what God does. We call those God sightings. God sightings are sort of a way to give God credit for something only He could do. Huddle up with your crew and take turns sharing something you've heard that only God could make. Adults, you share your God sightings first and then make sure everyone has a chance to share. Pause me while you do that. Isn't it exciting that we can see and hear evidence of God everywhere? Let's celebrate our God sightings by singing a song together.
me He's not against me I will hold to the plans he has for me When I'm broken He will fix me I will call on the name of the Lord All my life, all I know God's been good, good to my soul Mountain high, valley low I'm gonna sing wherever I go God is for me He's not against me I will hold to the plans He has for me And when I'm broken He will fix me I will If you keep your ears tuned in, you can hear evidence of God at work. Sounds like birds chirping, people laughing, and thunder booming all remind us of God because He made those things. God doesn't just make sounds. He's the best listener in the universe. Let's try a quick game of telephone to see how well you can hear. I'd like your group to sit or stand in a straight line. Have one adult think of a short phrase and whisper the message to the first person in line, who will whisper to the next person, and so on down the line. Once it gets to the end, have the last person say the message out loud. See if the message makes it clearly to the end or if it gets mixed up. Pause me while you do that. Today, we're learning that God hears you. You are treasured. God doesn't get your words mixed up. He never misunderstands. He even hears words you barely speak, or ones you speak inside your head, and heart. In Psalm 116 verse 1 it says, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Let's celebrate our love for God who watches us and always hears us by singing this next song.
I wonder what bright Bible memory buddy will help us remember that God hears us. You are treasured. Glad you flew back to see us at Treasured VBS. Wow, the first day was definitely something to squawk about. Meet Ruby, a flashy, splashy macaw. You can find her and her fine feathered flock from the southern part of North America all the way down into South America. In the rainforest, their bright, beautiful feathers blend right in with the flowers and fruit way up in the trees. At a glance, you might just see flashes of blue, red, or yellow. But God made each macaw a little different. If you look closely, you'll see that each macaw's facial feathers are unique, a little like your fingerprints. Of course, Ruby and her fine feathered friends don't need fingers. They have these talented toes. Their fabulous feet grab hold of fruit, nuts, and seeds they love to snack on. And of course, she's bananas about her beak. God made macaw beaks so strong that they can crack coconuts. <laughs> Just try that with your hands. Plus, Ruby's beak can even act like another foot, helping her climb. Now, if you thought that was amazing, her squawk will really give you something to talk about. Ruby's buddies love to gab way up in the trees. In fact, if you walked through the rainforest in the morning, you'd hear some of her noisiest neighbors. Aren't they wonderful? Macaws can't actually speak words like you do, but they can imitate human speech. Maybe they just wonder why you're so quiet. Open up your beak and speak. Hmm, maybe you feel like you're squawking. I mean, talking and no one's listening. Or you need a friend who will listen. Maybe you're not sure what to say sometimes when life seems hard. When you open up your beak and speak, God is always listening. God's ears are always open. He hears you if you're loud and excited, or if you feel like being quiet. The Bible is full of riches that tell us that God is listening. Check this out. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. God hears you. You are treasured. Ruby reminds us that God hears our chattering, our squawks, and everything that comes out of our beaks, especially our praises. Join me in singing this next song to our God.
Before you head off on your adventures today, let's check in with Dr. Diggingstone. I heard he created an invention that helps with treasure hunting. Oh, uh, hello, Doc. Oh, uh, sorry I was so rude yesterday. Uh, I, I was just surprised to see all of you guys, and I thought I was the only one who knew that this was the place to look for treasure. That's okay. We forgive you. Thanks. So, are you still looking for treasure? I sure am, and I'm going to find it. I've got my one-of-a-kind trusty patent pending Dr. Daryl Diggingstone treasure tracker to help me find it. Wow, sounds fancy. How does it work? Well, I carry it around and it beeps when it gets close to treasure, which I hear in my headphones. And then when I get close enough, it begins pulling me towards the treasure. I'll show you. Ready? <laughs> Well, that can't be right. Unless you've got a pot of gold in your shoe. Hmm. No, there's no gold here. Well, it must be a misfire. Let, let me try over here. All right, take two. No misfires. <laughs> ah! Again? I think we can explain. No, 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 here. Let me try one more time down here. All right. Oh no, watch out, this is going crazy. Doctor, your machine is working. It's finding lots of treasure. But all it's finding is all of you. <laughs> We're the treasure. You're a treasure because you're priceless to God. Wait, I'm priceless? Yes, you are. God knows you. You are treasured. God hears you. You are treasured because God loves you. So there's no gold around here, right? I don't know. There might be. Well, in that case, I'm going to find it. I'm going to go back to camp, charge up the treasure tracker. Nothing's going to stop me from finding that treasure. Uh, I don't think the doctor gets it yet. But that's OK. We can keep telling him. Let's shout it really loud so he can hear us all the way back at his tent. On the count of three, we're going to shout out, you are treasure. Ready? One, two, three. You are treasured! It's time for another totally true adventure from the Bible. And this one might get a little dangerous. King Saul knows about David being chosen to be the new king. And Saul is angry. He's trying to find David to kill him. And if Saul thinks we're with David, he'll try to get us too. David and about 600 of his men are hiding out here in the wilderness. I found this cave where we can hide too. Let's crawl inside where it's safe. Wherever you are, crawl around the room, staying low to the ground. Crawl under any tables or chairs you can get under. Then, meet me back here. Yesterday, you discovered that God picked David to be Israel's next king. David hasn't taken over yet. Saul is still on the throne. But because David is way more popular than Saul, King Saul is jealous. In fact, he's so jealous that he has tried to kill David. He keeps trying, even though David hasn't done anything wrong. Maybe you felt like that. You got in trouble even though you didn't do anything wrong? Maybe someone blamed you for something you didn't do. As for me, someone once blamed me for breaking something that I didn't even break. But now it's your turn. Talk with other people who are watching with you. Tell about a time you got in trouble for something you didn't do.
Thanks for sharing those stories. I love finding out more about my friends. David, what are you doing here? One of my men told me there were people hiding here. I came to see who you are. We're your friends. How are you? <sighs> if we're friends, I can tell you that I'm feeling a lot of pressure and fear. Put your hands together like this and press as hard as you can. That's how life feels right about now. Wow, what happened? Not long ago, my man and I came across this little town. We discovered that the Philistines, they're a big, powerful army, were stealing from the people there. I asked God if I should help the people in the village. God listened. He told me to fight the Philistines. I've heard about the Philistines. You don't want to mess with that army. <laughs> I know, right? My men were afraid, but God gave us victory. It felt so good to help. <laughs> then why are you so worried? Well, first, I have the world's biggest bully hunting for me, and he has a whole army. Find a place, wherever you're at, you feel closed in. Maybe under a table, behind a couch, move there right now. You can see how it feels to be pressed in by fear and worry. I thought we helped the people in the village, but then I asked God if we were safe there. God heard me, then said, nope. The village leaders are going to turn you in. Now, I'm even being pressured by the people I've helped. Squeeze a little closer into that space to see what that feels like. And it gets worse. I asked God if Saul would attack, and God said, yes. I'm feeling the pressure again. Are you? Curl up into the tiniest ball you can. Now we're hiding in these caves until the danger passes, whenever that might be. Friends, how are you feeling? Call it out. David, how are you handling all this pressure? Well, I can always talk to God. He hears every word I say. And because he loves me, I know he cares about what I tell him. Bend down, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Answer me, for I need your help. Protect me, for I am devoted to you. Save me, for I serve you and trust you. You are my God. Listen closely to my prayer, O Lord. Hear my urgent cry. I will call to you whenever I'm in trouble and you will answer me. Ah, it feels good to talk to God. And every time you do, God hears you. You are treasured. Thanks, but remember, keep it down. Oops, sorry. I have to go, but I'm glad to know that I have friends like you on my side. When you head out, keep an eye out for King Saul's soldiers. They're everywhere. Thanks, David. We just got to meet a king. How cool is that? Those words David read are in the Bible. They're part of Psalm 86. That's a prayer David wrote during this time, thanking God for always listening to him and taking good care of him. David knew that whether you say a prayer, sing a prayer, or write a prayer, God hears you. You are treasured. David knew that God hears even our silent prayers, ones we don't speak out loud or can't put into words. Let's try that. We'll offer God something I know he's eager to receive, the gift of our friendship. We're coming to him knowing that God is listening because that's what friends do. You'll start by putting your hands in front of you, palms up, with your wrist resting on your legs. Now, close your eyes. Not because it's a rule when you pray, but because it keeps you from looking around at others. This prayer is between you and God. Think of it as a silent psalm. Let's pray. God, thanks for listening. 
thanks for hearing our words and hearing our hearts. In our hands, we're each holding something hurtful, a weight on our hearts. Maybe it's a word someone said or something a family member did. As we hold this before you, hear our hurting hearts. God, thanks for the good things you give us. Friends, move your lips silently, telling God something you're thankful for. No one will hear this except God. God, thank you for hearing our questions when we need your help. Friends, shrug your shoulders up to your ears. Silently ask God a question, then slowly release your shoulders. Thank you, God, for lifting our burdens. Thanks for hearing us and treasuring us. Amen. Thanks for visiting me today, friends. Oh, remember what David said. Watch out for King Saul and his soldiers as you leave the cave. I'm so excited that we're all here at Imagination Station. Together, we're going to discover some super cool things. We're gonna have a blast today. But before we get started, I need to know who remembered their imagination today? Uh-oh, sometimes we forget. I kind of thought that might happen, so I asked my friend Ruby the Macaw for her ideas. Well, she told me something very interesting. Did you know that God is so amazing that he gave macaws like Ruby a special call they use to celebrate each day when the sun rises and when it sets? Isn't that amazing? Hmm, I wonder what it would be like if we celebrated every time the sun rose and every time it set. 
Let's close our eyes and imagine we're macaws like Ruby out in the huge rainforest, sitting high up in a tree, waiting for the sunrise. <coughs> Open your eyes. Can you imitate that call? Do it now, as loud as you can. Wow, you would make some great macaws. Now that our imaginations are back on call, let's get moving. How long do you think macaws can live? Do you think macaws like Ruby can live up to eight years or up to 80 years? Talk about that with the people in your room. Okay, let's make a drum roll so I can reveal the amazing answer. And the answer is macaws can live up to 80 years. In fact, they can outlive their human owners when they live in captivity. Wow! With all that macaw celebrating and calling, I can tell that your ears are tuned up and ready to listen. So let's try something that'll make us think about sound. This is my spoon gong. A gong is a big, noisy instrument. I wonder if this little spoon can really make a big, noisy noise. Let's find out. Grab a spoon and a piece of string and make one just like mine. Just tie the middle of the string around the spoon handle like this. When you're done, we'll try them out together. When you look at this strange contraption, you might wonder what it has to do with sound. But here's something interesting. Sound is actually vibration that passes through an object into our ears. Our ears pick up that vibration and our brains translate that into a sound. And just like we hear sounds of different things in the world around us, God hears you too. You are treasured. Now, knock the spoon against something metal. was kind of clangy and not really impressive, right? Hmm. Let's try something different now. Watch what I do and then you try it. 
wrap an end of the string around each forefinger and then lean forward. You'll put the tips of the forefingers just inside your ears so the spoon dangles and the string is still touching your ears. Then clang the spoon against something metal. Now you try! Sound is actually vibration energy. When something makes a sound, it gives off vibration energy that travels through the air or even through a substance. In this experiment, the sound first travels through the air, but when it travels through the string, the vibration is much stronger. That's why it sounds different. Today, we're discovering that God hears you. You are treasured. If you're like me, you know how it feels when it seems no one's listening to you. Or maybe it feels like what you say doesn't really matter. Or maybe others don't notice us. But God always hears us. And just like our friend Ruby, we can call out our praise to Him when we celebrate His awesomeness. This is called a sing -a bob In just a minute, you'll each get one to experiment with. You won't believe how this works. Watch and listen. Wow! Remember, sounds are vibration energy. The holes in this plastic piece create vibration energy when we whirl it through the air. Now it's your turn! In your treasured student pack, you'll find a sing -a bob to experiment with. Give it a twirl and a whirl!
No matter what sounds you make, loud, quiet, happy, or sad, you can always trust that God hears you. You are treasured. And God loves it when we talk to Him. We can talk to God about anything, anytime. Take your Try This At Home sticker and attach it to a Ziploc bag. Drop your thingamabob in it for safekeeping. I'll see you next time. Today, we're heading to the island of Bohol in the Philippines. Okay. In the Philippines, not all kids get to go to school and learn, especially if they have a disability. And a disability that a lot of kids have in the Philippines is deafness. Being deaf means you aren't able to hear. So when you hear cars honking their horns or your teachers talking in school, kids who are deaf can't hear that. Deaf kids may not be able to hear with their ears, but they can talk and listen with their hands. Deaf people can use something called sign language. Sign language turns special hand motions into different words. How cool is that? Thankfully, in the Philippines, a group of people started a school just to help deaf kids get an education. They teach classes in sign language so everyone can learn and communicate. The school director found out that a little boy named John wanted to join their school, so he went out looking for him. So he went looking for John and his father. We went over to a little bakery by the highway and we told him we're looking for the father of the little deaf boy, that's all we knew. And a guy named Jojo showed up. And a young man was very open and very interested in us trying to help his son John into school. And so we asked if he could, we could meet John. So he took us around the back of the bakery. Jojo has three little girls and John, the little boy. And they all sleep inside this garbage pile. My heart went out to these little kids. Finally, he found John. There he is. <laughs> Hi. Even though he couldn't hear, John was very happy to see them. The school even donated new clothes for John to wear. <laughs> I think he likes them. Even though John had never used sign language before, he learned it very quickly. John is now in school, in art school in Loon. Uh, we just found him last Saturday and it's uh, really very uh, fast. This morning, uh, when he just arrived in the office, we show him the dorm where he will stay. We introduced him to his uh, new teachers, and the teachers were, were also very helpful and introduced him to his classmates. Then his classmates teach him some sign language. We made a sign name for him. He is very happy now that he is going to school. It seems like he showed willingness and interest in his study. Isn't it amazing to see how John communicates with his teachers and how they hear him through his hands? In the Bible, the book of Psalms tell us, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. Johnny's only been in school for a couple months and he already knows a lot of sign language communicates really well. What is this thing right here? What's this? A tree. Right. And then that's what's one of these. Tree leaf. Leaf. Yeah. Where? Where you see? Oh, you see a boat. A boat out there. Right. Right. So he's learning all the words. Very fast. Two months. 
There's no crab there. Yeah, there, they know. Ah, yeah, there's a crab there. See him? John doesn't say words like we do, but God hears everything he says. God is listening to you too. Whether you speak out loud or whisper a prayer in your heart, God hears you. You are treasured. Welcome to Closing Quest. Let's start by standing and singing together. God's creativity and love. You are God's sightings to me. When you leave here today, look for more God's sightings. Today, you discovered that God hears you. You are treasured. Our Bible memory buddy, Ruby, helps us remember that whether you're quiet or make a big, bold noise, God is listening. Let's sing about that. Hear you shout. He knows you. He knows. 
from VBS, I like to tell others about the awesome time we had together. I might tell them a joke I heard, or about who got the wettest during a game, or something cool I discovered about God. I imagine some of you do that too. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm talking, people around me aren't listening. Maybe they're busy watching TV. Sometimes when I'm talking about VBS, people would rather talk to someone else instead of listening to me. Or have a conversation on their phones by texting someone. They may be quiet, but they're not really listening. And other times, there's just a lot of noise around us, like barking dogs, sirens, music. Sometimes people aren't good listeners. But God treasures you so much. He wants to hear what's on your heart. God hears you. You are treasured. And nothing can keep God from hearing you. Let's try an experiment. We'll call this the High Hertz Ear Experiment. Now, don't worry, it doesn't hurt. The word hertz is just a way scientists measure sound. Like we measure distance in inches and miles. The higher the hertz, the higher pitch the sound. We're all going to listen closely and quietly. I'll play some sounds. If you can hear them, raise your hand. If you don't hear anything, put your hand down. Easy peasy, right? I just need you to be honest. Here's the first sound. Go ahead and raise your hand if you hear it. Keep your hand up. We're going to switch to the next sound. If you don't hear this one, then put your hand down. Did you notice if any hands went down? Let's try the next sound. If you could hear that, then your hand should still be up. If you didn't hear it, then put your hand down. Here's the final sound. If you heard that last sound, keep your hand up. Now look around you and use your detective skills. What do you notice about all the people whose hands are down? Grown-ups can't hear high frequency sounds very well. Our ears all have tiny hairs in them that move sound through the ear canal. As you get older, those teeny tiny hairs, they don't work as well. Now, God is older than all of us, but fortunately his ears don't work like ours. God doesn't just hear the sounds we make, he hears our hearts. God listens to you with his mind and with his heart too. God is never distracted by baseball games, other friends, or barking dogs. God hears you. You are treasured. Because God loves you and wants to be your friend. And that's what friends do. Let's sing and celebrate God's wild love for us.
We've had some fun adventures at Treasured VBS today. I already can't wait to see you next time. Let's wrap up our day with one last celebration. We'll sing a song as a reminder to do everything, all we do, for the God who loves us so much. of the